G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been about 10 days since I made the last one. I haven't been able to catch up with any politicians. They're all a very bunch of slippery and shy characters to find, uh, especially face to face. Uh, as I was saying in my last video before I went off in a bit of a tangent, uh, it's about false division. Now, Labor follows the socialist, which tends to lean towards Marxism, which then tends to lean towards communism. And unfortunately, following the money um, in capitalism, when it becomes corrupt, it becomes fascist. So, if, put it simply, if you have socialism and you don't have capitalism with it, it will become communism. But if you have capitalism and you don't have socialism with it, then it will become fascist because people with the money become very arrogant and fascist about how they dole out their little pennies to get you to do things, earn a wage. I'm not against socialism as such, but I'm against it going that far to become communism because all you got to do is look at China and and the amount of other times that it's it's failed, that the socialism experiment has failed on this planet. Now, the capitalism side of things, that works well, but unfortunately, it's gone to a stage where it's there is so much corruption and greed in it, it's it's becoming fascism. Now, either or either, either, they're both isms. Now, I don't like communism and I don't like fascism. Probably because I'm more of um, a realist. I prefer realism. Now, the realism, I'm stuck in the middle between all these morons and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people are feeling the same thing because I talk to a lot of people on a daily basis, face to face and have conversations about politics. If they don't want to talk about it, I say, fine, okay, see you later. Um, and some bring religion into it, which they're really disappointed with my unorthodox point of view there. But getting back to it. Now, it is a false division. And a lot of people say, uh, you know, that's the system we got. Well, the system's broken. We need to change it. And we need to change it radically. Now, I'm not talking about burning fucking everything down. Um, like the socialists are, and they say, you know, because it's capitalism's a bastard and blah, blah. Well, they're right there. Yeah, capitalism is a bastard because it's gone so corrupt. Um, but like I said, it, it's the balance. Now, here's the trick. The politicians don't want to find that balance uh, between socialism and capitalism because it keeps them employed and it gives them... Um, an excuse to be around. We probably only need half the amount of politicians we've got if it was all working properly. Now, they say there's a lot of, like the BLM and LLGBTQI, PQ, plus whatever, they say there's a lot of racism and, and phobias and homophobia and Islamophobia and um, it's all systemic, you know, this racism is systemic. Well, no, it's not systemic. What is systemic is greed and corruption. There is racism about, there is people that don't like gays, there is people that don't like Muslims. That doesn't change anything, it's not systemic. What is systemic is the greed and the corruption. What people aren't realising to me, from what I see, is they just want to hate their little, their issues. Um, I'm, I'm more of a solutionist, solutionism, if you want to call it that. We'll get into isms. Um, I've had a chat with a few people from the mob. This is Australia, after all, call them the mob. And I've oh, planted the seeds about, you know, you're not going to, if, if you want to go back to your past and your rainbow serpent and your dream time and, and, and take the country back and go back that way, it ain't never going to happen. You are dreaming. With a population of more than seven and a half billion on this planet, you are dreaming. So the seed I've given is more along the lines of learn from the history, 
take the good points out of history and utilize them going forward. Now, the seed I've planted with them is several hundred years ago, there was a place called America and they were being tyrannized by a English government. So they drew up a constitution. There was only a small number of states, a handful, and they gave it a Bill of Rights. And then they threw out the tyrannous people. A bit of blood was spilt. Freedom's only a concept after all, isn't it? So, and all I'm proposing is a concept of not repeating history, learning from it and going forward with it to combat the greed and corruption that's currently in the system of the Western Hemisphere. So, okay, it might be a concept and it's a bit far out there. But that's what I do. I don't think inside the box. I think outside the box. If you don't agree with it, fine. But have the conversation with people and go, well, how else are we going to solve problems? Because it's pretty well for sure that the politicians aren't going to do it. They don't want to change the paper system we got now because it's nice and it's slow and it's easy for them to come up with, uh, uh, what a, what's, what's the wording for it? Uh, we'll call it plausible deniability. Uh, so they go, oh, we haven't heard of that or... No, there's too much involved in trying to change that. Because all the answers are actually out there. All the energy answers, there's dozens of different types of energy that could be used, and it's clean energy, um, not necessarily solar panels and windmills, even though they would have their use. There is plenty of good clean energy ideas out there but the government doesn't want that because if you look at the both sides of the political realm, because there's only usually a two-party system, any other parties are, are minors, uh, they get corporate donations. Once you follow that money up the ladder to the corporate donations, you'll find that, and it's not the 1%, it's the 1% of the 1% that own most of the capital on this planet. They don't want to change that system because they're making way too much money out of it. So they don't want to implement a new system until they can work out how to control it. And that's the part that pisses me off because their control turns into consumerism, which is corrupt. So they can throw the money around to whoever they want, long as that it's doing what they want, and it's about the control. I'm not about control. I'm about, I'd like to see the politicians do what they're actually meant to do, which is the will of the people, which is not happening. Daniel Andrews is as corrupt as they come um, because he's in bed with a corrupt communist system. Now, it doesn't matter which one you call it, whether it's communism or capitalism, both are corrupt. And I want to get away from both of them if I can. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm stuck in the middle. So I'm going to question them and question them and question them until I'm blue in the face. And leave it up to me. I'll find a little bit of time somewhere and I'm having a little bit of mechanical trouble with my living quarters because it's a van, big van. And once I sort that out, hopefully in between I'll find politicians or I'll start to talk to people on the street and, and post this on YouTube and I'll go to these meetings wherever I can and interview people and try to give them the unorthodox point of view I've got and see what they got to say. Anyway, thanks for your time. Catch you later.